Okay, I have uh, seven o'clock. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting to order for October 17th, 2019. To my far left is Justin Lawrence, uh, Flo Smith, and to my right is Jeremy Hansen. Sitting in with us as administrator is Tom Badowski and our treasurer, Diane Isabel. Public comment. Uh, let's see here. Uh, additions and changes to the oh, agenda. Oh, the hearing. Oh, well, that's right. Uh, open the hearing for uh, class uh, regarding classification change of portion of class four section of Black Road. Um, anything on that? Um, I know that some of the neighbors were here to uh, yeah. to discuss it, so I would defer to what We're their here. thoughts are. Okay, any discussion on this? Sure thing. Uh, yeah, we uh, continue to. Uh, since uh, since the petition why don't you, why don't you state your name for the oh my name is Dave Dow. Um, since the petition remains to be changing the classification from four to three, um, I know there was some discussion at a meeting about whether that was still on the board or not, uh, still on the table or not, and apparently it is. Um, so we, uh, given that that's uh, what we're here to hear about. Um, we're, we are strongly against that. We remain to be strongly against that. Um, we are most concerned about a disruption to our yard and our landscaping and some of the nice trees along the road there. Uh, we sort of assume that there are uh, requirements for classifications uh, of roads and if it gets changed to a class three, that there I assume there's some uh, requirements uh, between a class four, class three, class two, and class one on a state road. <coughs> um, I've seen it in other towns. I'm not sure I've seen, the, seen those documents here in Berlin. Um, so if it gets changed to a class three, then, then we're worried that that's automatically going to mean a bunch of construction, uh, tearing up our yard, tearing up some trees, and that sort of thing. I think one of the troubles here is um, this has morphed back and forth. The, the, it pretty much started off that uh, Josh Walker wanted the town to take over winter maintenance in the, for sanding and whatnot on the, on the road, on Black Road. Um, we as a town or as a board cannot do that in good conscience because we'd have to do it to any any other class four that was brought before us that people wanted maintained. Um, then the discussion kind of turned to seeing about changing the classification of Black Road from four to three so we could accommodate that. Um, but I don't know, um, of course we haven't really discussed it we discussed Kuwa's trail the other meeting. Uh, other than that, I mean, that's that's what I'm at. The only thing I'm worried about is is that Josh says that, that some people have gotten stuck down there, and um, it's getting to the point of where if he's going to uh, rent out apartments out of his garage then there is a certain safety, public safety issue there. And that's pretty much where I stand. I can't speak for the rest of the board, but that's where I stand. So, um, go ahead. so um, we had, I, I thought we had come to a, a point previously where everybody seemed happy with the, with the highway crew taking over um, some maintenance of that road in the winter and that we were going to do this as a trial for a year so it wouldn't be a long-term commitment. We'd see how it would go. And there likely there may be other class four roads that um, you know that might come forward and ask to maintain this, and I think we would have to look at that on you know an appropriate basis. If we've got three residences here um, for a short portion of road, um, 
that might be okay. That might that might be a slippery slope, as as you say, but that might be an okay, not a terribly steep slope. Um, but I mean, as I understand, as I understood in the last meeting, we all kind of came to consensus that this short portion of road could be maintained by the town, and that everybody seemed to be happy by it. By it, we could kind of put this to bed, and now we're sort of backing away from that, and now going and trying something else that you clearly don't have all the neighbors with support. So if there's a class four road out there, and there's several neighbors that say this is something that you know we, we would want to look at upgrading to a class three, then I think we should consider that. But in this case, we've got, so we have one of the neighbors that does not support it. So I think I think the classification in a lot of ways, um, we, I talked to Dana about it. I, I think it's more of a, it's, it's not gonna impact the road like maybe you're imagining if you did do that though, because there's no, I agree with you, like that there was the agreement before. So what my thought from a financial standpoint is when you research what you need to do to upgrade a road from a class four to a class three, it's automatically grandfathered and we can just do that. We mm -hmm. didn't have to do any road improvements. We didn't need to do anything to it. And then if you're going to start maintaining it in the winter uh, for winter maintenance, you would actually, by upgrading it from a class four to a class three, would then receive the state aid money so it would, would be exactly the same thing as it is today, only it would have a class three label. And it doesn't mean that, that, that it needs to be construction vehicles going up and down it, any of that. And then that way you would still receive the state aid money to have that on your books. Yeah. But that's why I thought it makes sense. I mean, it's either way, it's minimal expense. The, uh, that's why I thought it was it was was um, there are probably some constraints on how a class um, three road can be is because the state's probably giving you more money if it's for a class three than a class four. So so it must have give you some any, standards. There's no money for a class four, and if this wasn't already a town road. To bring it to a class three standard, you would have to follow certain specs. Right. But since it's already a town road, it's grandfathered. I know in some recent uh, development review board decisions, folks who are developing uh, on a class four road, the, the DRB makes conditions in the in their permits that the the onus on the maintenance of that road is property owner, it's not the town. They clearly point that out. Uh, it, we haven't had a lot of decisions to that effect, but the, the several that we've had over the last handful of years, it's, that's, that's been the stance of the, of the DRB, is they, they recognize the limitations of the town with respect to class four roads, and they have, they have um, made it, uh, the, whoever wants to do this development, they're responsible for, for maintaining it, for, for uh, emergency vehicles and, and wear and tear. And historically, that's how this road's been used. Uh, can I uh, say something? Sure, Josh. Um, uh, to what's your name? To, just what's, for the record, what's your name? Uh, Josh Walker. Uh, to respond to what you just said, I had permission from the DRB, DRB board signed back in 1997 that I had the right to maintain Black Road as needed, that I was going to maintain it, the town was not. When this stuff started coming up with uh, my neighbors, I brought that to the select board, and they said that the DR Boot B board had no right to give me permission to take that road over, or to maintain that road, or use that road, that the DRB board was stepping out of bounds. So if you're giving other people permission to use Class 4 roads, you may want to think about that because this that's what's led this to this this fire because I had permission and it worked for 17 years until somebody came up with a different idea about it. So either way when I look at it, it's, it's, it's I talked to Dana, it cost us roughly $5,800 per mile of road. It costs us to maintain it? Winter maintenance. Okay. So that, that's... Google Maps, I checked it out because it's always. So I wanted to see how much state aid you get. It's only about $111. Um, so the cost to maintain it, winter maintenance on that road would be about $423.
<laughs> for a year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with state aid, if you did it that way, it'd be about 312. So I just wanted to throw that out there. <coughs> And, you know, another thing is um, uh, about the town maintenance on there. I was wondering why, you know, I have always in the past maintained plowed all the way out to Crosstown Road, and, and uh, my neighbors have benefited from that. They have Sorry, never offered me any Sorry. compensation for doing that. They've never thanked me for doing any of that. They, they, That's and, and I don't see why I should be responsible for plowing that road all the way out. And it's not like I'm going to stop, pack, you know, at their driveway, plowing when I need to get all the way out as well. So, notwithstanding the history, we're still looking at, you know, how how do we move forward from here? Um, right. And we had a we had a plan that everyone had agreed to that we were going to go forward with this trial and see how it goes, and if it works badly, then we do something else. Right. And if it works well, I think, I think based on where we were at, it was just whether or not you want to take and get the whether you want the state aid money or not. You know. Well, but right. so yeah, so we're looking at so it's fifteen seventy four per mile, and you've got what point zero seven miles. Uh, so we're talking about yeah, it's like hundred hundred bucks. Hundred and ten dollars, right yeah. there on the right. Yeah. Yep. So uh, so we but got it to, keeps us out of the gray area too, where. I mean, because I would think that if you had other people that came that class four roads if they were maintained. Sure, sure. And, and and we could probably sit down and figure out how much it would cost if we maintained all of the class four roads. Right. With where there are residences, that is. Um, we could figure that out if people were interested in, in us doing that. Um, however, still going back that we had kind of come to a conclusion that um, without elevating it to a class three road, the doubts are okay with it. Walkers were okay with it. The select board seemed to be okay with it, and we were looking at moving forward. And now, by, by changing it to a class three for a hundred dollars, I get it, and the slippery slope, yeah. whatever. Um, right. That now you have a party that previously agreed that does not agree. We can look back at this again next year and see how it goes. But I think for right now, um, we can look at leaving it how it is and see if ma maintaining it for this winter, if that goes okay, and if it, you know, if it. However much it costs, we should have a pretty good idea of how much time Tim spends over there. Yeah, my guess would be it'll be less than the average mm -hmm. per mile calculation on that particular piece of road. Would be. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard hard to tell exactly in any given winter, but you know we would yeah. we would know. Yep. You, you know, and I don't know if I should bring this up at this meeting because we're working on the winter maintenance at this point. But with um, me having another family living down there. Um, I'm worried about having one lane down through there. I need to have it wider so that two cars can pass by each other. And, and it needs to be wider. I don't know if this is a meeting or if I should ha go and sign up and get another meeting done about widening the, the road or the maintenance area or whatever you want to call the right of way down through there. Well, I don't think that's Pretty for this meeting. Say that. Um, I'm just trying to think. The you, you know, and, and there's one other thing is um, that I was going to bring up is you know we as a, uh, citizens of the town of Berlin vote in a zoning board, and we have that board come up with regulations for the way the town should be run. And I brought to your attention that the uh, zoning has required 25 feet access to a property. And you guys just seem to just blow that away and don't care about that. And why are you guys overriding the zoning board, which requires 25 feet to get to a property, and you guys want to give me 12 feet, and then after numerous meetings, I get you to let me have 16 feet, where it's a requirement in the town to have 25 feet. Well, but I think the zoning regulations, the, the DRB has latitude to to work with those zoning regulations. Um, um, even though I've been down to uh, Public Safety Fire Division and they require 20 feet to within 50 feet of a property, of a dwelling. 
And so I was thinking that the town zoning must have brought that into account where they, public service, re, fire prevention requires 20 feet clear. So I assumed that the zoning board had it 25 feet so you can have a 20 foot clear and ditching or maintenance on the side of that for putting snow banks. So, but the, this is the wrong meeting for this. We'll take this up another time. Is this, is, are you, you're going by the new zoning regulations now? Uh, yes. So, since this is kind of your ballwick, Tom, would the previous agreement be grandfathered for the zoning? I'm not, what, what agreement? Or I, I'm sorry, I'm just not up to speed on, on the issue here. What was the uh, what was the width of the what was the, what was the required zoning width before the new zoning regs? It stayed the same. It was twenty five feet, and it stayed the same for twenty five feet. Okay. For, and, you know, I know for, people that for, 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 for new curl. developments. For new developments, the, they're they're requiring a, a fifty foot right of way for for a new subdivision. That. But that's for a road that's going to be upgraded to a class three. The, the, that's the whole premise. About that, that's why it's 50 foot. So it's it's any subdivision. It's, it's 50 foot. But this one here, I think right away on this one, it's what three rod. It's 50 feet, 49.6 feet, 49.9 feet. So I think the new regulations also um, discourage you guys having any subdivision on class four road, probably for this very same reason. It does, and that's again why the onus is put on to the, the property owner. Correct. And uh, to to address the earlier issue, the Development Review Board has um, developed a um, a shared maintenance agreement for neighbors. I mean that's that's what zoning runs into a lot uh, all the time that somebody does want to help maintain a road, uh, and so in now the deeds that are written for for subdivisions with multiple lots. There's language to the to the effect requiring that there be a shared maintenance agreement on on, on any common roads in that subdivision. But that's on a private road, isn't it? That's not a town road. That's on a private road, correct? Right? Yeah. And this is a town road we're talking about. This is. Uh, oh, but they also have done it on the class four road yeah. as well. Maybe Which is 50 feet. It's whatever the whatever's there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, instead of thrashing us all to death, um, want to make a motion? Somebody have a motion for this one? Well, we have, we have we exit the public hearing, and then we have an item to yeah. to decide this later. Is that what you mean to exit the public hearing? Mm -hmm. We move to exit the public hearing and reconvene the select board. I second the motion. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So we'll skip down to 735. 735, classification of Black Road. Do we hear a motion? I move that we um, trial a winter maintenance plan where the Berlin Highway crew maintains the road over this winter, um, takes that responsibility over from, from the landowners for one winter. I second that motion. Do you Any further discussion before, on that? Before you act on that, um, it's not the entire black road, right? It's a, it's a Just certain a section. Yeah, so I, I, I should say this, the, the section from, from Crosstown Road going down how far was that, Justin? Roughly 385 feet. Roughly 385 feet. Mm -hmm. I second the motion as presented. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, I don't have any. Thank you. Uh, public comment? Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. 
Okay, I've given the September trial balance, budget status report, and delinquent tax notice to the select board. And I've received an email from the state that has to do with um, uh, the prebate or the state taxes. Okay, if you file your taxes late, then chances are I'm going to be sending you a revised bill. And in the past, I would get a, a big, huge file from them in the, in the middle of September and another one in October, and then I would just do revised bills just, you know, those two times. Now they've changed it so that they're going to start doing that July, August, and September and October, the beginning of the month, so that way the revised bills will be going out more timely, I think, uh, and I think it would be better for the residents. Instead of me getting 50 of them to process, I'll probably get 10 or 15 at a time. So I think that's a really good change the state has made, and they're just starting it this year. Nice. Yeah. And that's all I got. Okay, thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. I have a question. When we have properties go for tax sale, uh -huh. are they on our website? Yes. I put I them on the website. I, I was wondering. I haven't put them on yet. <laughs> okay. I have some coming up. <laughs> that's why I was. But I have to wait for the attorney to give me the final look at. I got gotcha. you. Right, yeah. I was looking at the report, and then I, was, I said that. I was like, oh, I haven't seen any. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just a little bit of the warrants. Um, Kunt is, was Phil going to be in? He's not going to be here, but Hannah and Mike will be here. So I would I would try to do some stuff. Uh, I can I could do my administrator's report. I could talk about this municipal ticketing and zoning. Uh, Bill's here. Let's do the ticketing. Um, let's see here. Let's see. I distributed to you folks. Um, you asked me to get a hold of the League of City Towns on that. Um, uh, so I, I sent that to you in your packet. Uh, they, they also have, um, have hired Trevor Whipple now as their law uh, enforcement, uh, and he has had a PowerPoint addressing this situation. I talked to Trevor two days ago, and uh, it's, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he, he um, basically said that a town should use every tool in its toolbox to help with help with um, the correction of zoning violations. And so I I asked him to come to uh, an, a select board meeting to present that PowerPoint to you folks. He said he'd be glad to do it really any Thursday that you folks meet for the next several months. So if you just check your calendars and what's a good date to have him come in, it's probably about a 15 minute window. Uh, for him to, to, to present this to, to you folks. And uh, uh, again, he said he's, he's more than happy to come in and do it. He's, he's um, traveled to several um, communities in, in Washington County and given this presentation. I mean, I've asked them for a, a draft ordinance as well that some yep. of these towns have that we may be able to, to mirror. Um, but again, it's, if you, you'll hear from the Planning Commission, you'll hear from the Development Review, that um, that this is something that they are advocating as well. Those two boards are advocating this as well. So. <clears throat> the um, I'm just trying to think when to have you come in because we were. I would say probably the first meeting in November because uh, we're going to be starting budget season yep. here pretty quick. Okay. Do you have any feedback about this, Phil? No, I, Tom and I have spoken about this, and I, I think the way to go about this is if, if you're going to identify a violation that you want to ticket, um, Tom's raised concerns about safety. And um, <coughs> I think what you designate, you want to have your expert be your agent, actually the one that issues the ticket. And if there's an issue with you know, possibility of, uh, of a violent situation occurring, um, we will most certainly deliver the ticket. But when whoever issues a ticket becomes by proxy the prosecutor. So in a case where I issue you a speeding ticket, I'm the prosecutor. In this situation, whoever, whatever expert you designate to issue these tickets would become your prosecutor. Mm -hmm. I would suggest a man with his ex expertise mm -hmm. because you're going to be up against lawyers and, and but if there's an, ever an issue with, he's not comfortable with actually issuing the ticket, we're glad to go and say, hey, the town has issued this municipal ticket to you, here you go. So, so he, he signs it, fills it up, he, hands he, it to you. He actually issues it, we deliver it. 
Yeah. I say here, you we do the we'll have them comply with the Soldiers and Sailors Relief Act information, and we'll give them a ticket and and explain that they need to be. They can plead on the ticket. There's there's pleadings they can make, or they can ask for a hearing, which Tom would show up with his information and and represent the town of Bruma. Or they can just go onto the website and pay the, pay the, the, pay the waiver. Goes. That's right. Right. And that's something I think that's we don't have any issue doing. I mean, if Tom feels that's warranted to issue a municipal ticket, if if there's not a he's not comfortable with with that interaction, we'll certainly deliver it for him. Who, um, I'm trying to think how to say this, Tom. When a ticket is issued for this, when they, if they want to appeal it, do they go to court or do they can come to the town? Uh, Trevor and I briefly discussed this, Brad, and I believe they they mark it right on the ticket. It's an appeal, then it's, it's just to like the a town. town. It's, it's, it's right. exactly right. That's it's the way the I understand that. And they'll, they'll go before a hearing officer. Mm -hmm. Tom will go. Whoever mm -hmm. witnesses Tom wants to bring will go, and then he'll show up. Yeah, yes. if, you go to his, if you go into his PowerPoint, I mean, he actually goes and shows yeah. what the ticket looks yes. like. Yes. And the ticket says, here are your options. You can you can admit that you did it and pay the, pay the fine. You can go no contest and pay the fine. You can challenge it. What's the... And then you go to the complete no contest. Right, no contest. And the way that system yeah. is set up is like a judicial bureau where you can go represent yeah. yourself, like yeah. a speeding ticket, so there's not a lot of legal uh, Somebody could probably Wait, then could. grieve it yes. yeah. and then keep going, and then you could end up with some legal expense, but it sounds like a very simple process. For yeah, I think that the judiciary really handles all of it. Yeah. And they make it very clear, as I understand yeah. it. So it would be like time. Unless you got you know, somebody, I think it could be an effective way to take care of some of these violations. That's yeah. the hope. Yeah. yeah, I mean, g given that there's not a ticket that you guys can write. Well, and the thing of it is, we're not zoning experts. I mean, that's that's, but we certainly have no problem delivering a ticket. So, mm -hmm. You know, the town's decided to do this. Here you go. Mm -hmm. You know. Well. <laughs> If you can get him in here, okay. First meeting in November. We'll do that. We'll have a little better understanding of it then. All right. I can get into the, um, under the administrator reports some things that for you folks. Sure. So you obviously heard know about the, the public work board is is um, has been pursuing uh, a sewer improvement project on Payne Turnpike North. It's from <coughs> the intersection of 62 Gravity Sewer Line down to uh, uh, Fisher Road. And what this, what this will do, this eliminates three existing and old town-owned pump stations, one here uh, behind Shaw's, one at the school and one at the fire station and replace and and currently now th this all this um, uh, wastewater goes up to uh, a manhole up at Pike which is several thousand feet away it's a lot of head a lot of a lot of wear and tear in those pumps it will convey it down to a a, um, a new pump station on the Central Mont uh, Chamber of Commerce property we've We've negotiated an easement with them and then pump it to a manhole here um, uh, uh, near the psychiatric hospital. So it's a lot less carry to pump. Uh, the original design was to, to take this gravity all the way to the city of Montpelier to their uh, water treatment facility. They had a siphon system there that we thought we could use to, to send all this down yep. and eliminate all the pumps. Um, but the siphon system proved problematic. Um, so, so that's not on on this piece right now. But we are, we ha we have designed this to be at depths where that can continue in the future to go to gravity by to, to Montpelier. So, so, um, so that's that's a, a, a big piece of it. We're looking to go to bid in November. One of the items that they've discussed in uh, public report is how. How can we make this 
project um, uh, more affordable, uh, uh, less costly. And one of the suggestions that uh, we discussed is during this construction is actually closing this section of Payne Turnpike North. And um, uh, so we're, we're putting a line item in our bid to, to reflect that. It's, uh, and so when we get the numbers back, we're gonna come back to the select board and say, for X amount of dollars savings, does this make sense for us, for you guys to allow the closure of this section of road while, while, we, put, we, while we put that in? And what would you say the duration of time? For About the three closure? months. Three months? Yep. What section of the road? It's from 62 down to Fisher Road. <coughs> How are you going to take and accommodate the school and the... Uh... Well, you, 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 well, we'll, everybody who lives around here will have access, continue to have access on it, we'll maintain access for them, but any other... The credit term, union? Uh, everybody on here will have, will have access. That's it's correct. It will be a through road. It won't be a through road. Correct? Okay. Yeah. I just so, wondered, I mean, you can't very well take and close the road in, in front of businesses. And so we're going to maintain it being open, um, uh, but we, we're going to, as we work on this this section, we're not, you know, folks yeah. can still, and we're just going to move. And um, um, so that's that's where we are putting a, a bit spec in there to that to that end, and it's it's going to, we're going to come back to you folks and say it's X amount of dollars of savings, and does it make sense for the town to allow us to close that road for that for that period of time? So. Um, so you're, what you're anticipating is doing in sec doing the road closures in sections. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just I was wondering about the about up there by the fire department and whatnot. If you're going to close the road, we would likely, especially for the school, we'd be on this side when school is out of uh, the <coughs> session. Then um, we're going to start the lower end to work our way up. Um, so so that so you're you're going to be seeing that as well on. Similar to on in the same project. I don't know if you guys have any questions before I move uh, on. Do, do you remember the, the timing of the, um, the the park and ride upgrades? I do not know. That's a good point. I would just make I would just oh. make sure that if we're closing that while they're going to be rolling their heavy equipment through there, that we're not going to be stepping on their toes. Yeah. Yeah, I concur. And if we do decide to close the road, obviously that requires you know, coordination with the with the fire department and Barry Town EMS. Because if there's somebody down on Rip Richardson Road, it'd be good to be able to get a, a truck down there yes. and not have to circle yep. back around or do yep. anything else funny. <coughs> so uh, the Public's Work Board has been approached by the First Congregational Church here uh, in town, and um, they have asked the Public's Work Board, got to get oriented here, um, <coughs> they've asked the Public's Work Board to um, put a line item bid to continue the water service down to their church. Um, they are a, a public water system and they have to maintain certain standards with the state. Um, and they don't want to be in the public water business. So they want to see what it would cost to run to run that. So there's there's a line item in in, in this bid to, to do that work as well. Are there any other places that would be able to hitch on to the that new section? All, all of them. All, any resident there could. Um, I don't know what's the appetite for them. But, uh, I mean, they have their own drilled wells and such. So, uh, but yet, yeah, yes, anybody along this stretch. Would be able to connect, and we're, we're reaching out to those folks as well. Yeah. Um, but again, I don't think there's much appetite. For, for I thought there was water on that section of the road. No, nope. There's sewer, but there's not water. So you may hear that we're we're not buying this for this. We're just we're just giving them a quote. We think yeah. we, we can get them a better quote if we put it underneath the yeah. umbrella of, of that. So. Yeah, 
We uh, soon the DRB will be uh, be getting an application from um, Central Vermont uh, Community Hospital, um, and they're looking to to put in a new building. Um, It's it's estimated to be four stories now. Um, it's going to be some psychiatric beds in there. Um, so I asked them to come to the select board. They were they were hoping to come tonight, but some of their executives are out of town. So they plan to coming to you folks in November to give you greater details on that. Um, but it's in the as you as you pull in. Uh, and the, that parking lot is on your right-hand side, closest to the buildings. It's going to be in that hmm. in that parking lot right there. Um, they can afford to lose parking spaces. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or if it's a parking garage. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's going to be a parking garage, but um, uh, but they are. Uh, they they they've come to the uh, planning commission, talked about it. They've uh, uh, they had some folks at. Um, DRB talking about it, so uh, I, I suggested to them that they come to you folks here in the very near future and, and talk about those plans. So, so that's 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 happening. The uh, 98 unit senior housing project that's over at the mall. The um, they've gone through their Act 250 about a week ago now. The Act 250 hearing, they didn't seem to have a lot of angst to come out of that hearing. So uh, they. You know, my sense is that there, that there are um, um, going to to uh, be looking at construction sometime in 2020 on that project. One of the when we're talking with the with the uh, with the folks from Mall and and Dusevich about water to the to the to the that project. Uh, right now, the the coals has a new water line, 10 inch water line here. It's not it's not town owned, but it's when Coles went in, they, they put it in themselves. So the, the current thinking is that uh, this project will will uh, continue that 10 inch line down the edge of this parking lot. And then right here's where their project is gonna go. Um, uh, and the, the Public Work Board is leaning that uh, this, this section of coals is brand new pipe. It's when, when ours went in, our engineers cert, uh, certified it, um, and that that the town would take over this this water line. You mean the one the coals put in? Correct. Yep. Uh, where they're contemplating laying the line, is that going to take in, uh, down the road? Is that going to affect the uh, town center or anything like that? We, we've had that discussion. And so and one of the other options <coughs> was to directional drill from the school like this. So that would not be in the new town center. So they're really looking at both options right now. Um, I think they're leaning this way. Uh, yeah. But it, it that's the question that we brought up. Since we don't have our, our new town center Designed, designed it's it's tough for us to say, you know, x x amount more dollars here for this one with a directional drill rather than this. But but they are looking at both options. That's now. great. They're looking at both options. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, uh, back to the hospital. Yes. Uh, what do they expect their water uses is going to be? I've asked them for a, a, a complete for their for their entire campus an allocation for water and sewer. I have. Uh, they are currently on town of Berlin sewer, but they use city of Montpelier water. I've informed them that um, it's the, uh, it, the the select board um, uh, is requiring that any new projects that uh, are uh, eligible for use of Berlin water use Berlin water, um, and they're aware of that. So I, I've asked them for the for the entire allocation of the project. I, they haven't given that to me yet, but I, I, ex I expect that soon. Um, so I think uh, um, we may be servicing them some, some water in that building. Or I can see that that um, in lieu of us servicing them water, we um, do their uh, fire suppression. They hook, hook up to ours for fire suppression, and they pay us for that, the, that value of that. 
and uh, allocation? For the water? Mm -hmm. They haven't given me any. Well, no, but I mean, uh, are we going to have enough water in the, with the new spring, our new wells? Or? We, would, we cannot do the entire campus with water. Even with the with the new well four, it would we, we could probably do with all well four, but then it it just completely takes our development out. So, the the, the mindset of the public work board is they're on they're on um, uh, Montpelier water on their campus that any that they continue to be on that, but any new item new buildings are are in, on Berlin water. So. That's that's the thought process. Okay. So what were you saying about the fire suppression system? How does that work? Well, they have uh, they have um, they have a three hundred thousand gallon tank up near First and Fitness behind First First and Fitness. So they pump water up into that, and that that feeds their that feeds their their pressure and everything their their um, sprinkler systems. We would we would. Because our line goes right by them, we would just run a uh, a service to their heads of their at their where their sprinkler intakes are, uh, and then just service just that. Pay a monthly just fee. pay a monthly fee for that. And then they wouldn't be a consistent water allot. They wouldn't be an every month water allotment off our Correct. well, right? Correct. 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 Yeah. Yeah. How are those storage tanks up there? Person fitness. I think they they're like 25 years old, so I know they want to. I think they have to do some rehab on it, and that's part of the conversation. They, 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 they want to get out of that capital investment. My sense is they want to get out of that capital investment, and uh, sort of like the idea of hooking to Berlin Water for fire suppression. Uh, let's see the planning commission. Um, uh, oh, they're here, so um, <laughs> I'll, I'll let them speak for themselves. Okay. You guys, want to come up? up or? Or? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm Polly McMurtry, and this is Jacob Coqua. Coqua, yep. And we're relatively new. Jacob's newer than I am, so I guess I'm a senior member now. <laughs> but it's been exciting times. Um, so you heard, I guess, a couple of weeks ago about the South the visit to South Burlington, and they South Burlington is considered the model of. You know, of new town centers and how to approach it all. So, and today I went to a meeting um, with a bunch of Chittenden County planning officials from the outlying towns, and it was very interesting. The, the focus of the meeting was about an official map, which is a planning regulatory tool, <coughs> and um, it's a requirement for a new town center. So, this is an informal meeting that. Towns like Williston still is sort of struggling with this, and they've been dealing with growth for a while. Um, so it was it was actually very interesting and um, informative. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the meeting in a little bit. But that's sort of one thing we've been doing. Um, we're also going to be meeting with the conservation committee in a couple of weeks um, to see how they how we can work with them and how they can work with us in terms of the new town center. Um, one of the things with the official map I should explain is it lays out in a map the public facilities like roads, paths, trails, wastewater, parks, and so this is where the conservation committee comes in. Um, and the whole purpose is so that when it comes time for development, these things are already sort of saved in a sense, the place so that you don't put um, a school where you want to put a road. And then you go, oh my goodness, we can't put the road. So that's what you know makes it really important. But um, so the conservation com committee actually will be very important in this process, as you all will be too. Um, other thing you've probably heard from Tom is there are two housing projects that are on the horizon that are very important to the Newtown Center. One senior, one workforce, but it's this sort of symbiotic relationship between business and housing. Um, 
And I'm, another initiative is I'm going to be meeting with Kate McCarthy of the Vermont Natural Resource Commission um, about, they're, they're very focused on smart growth. And um, so we're going to see how they can help us. So we're, we're kind of pushing forward, and you two can sort of pipe in whenever, mm -hmm. but um, we're pushing forward and we're doing what we can, what volunteers can do. But it's, it's a huge effort, and I guess that's one of the things I learned today is what a huge effort this is, is to not only sort of try to plan for growth, but to plan it in a very smart way, being compact and all. And um, it, it's almost, you know, it's too much for a, a set of volunteers. So it's really important to have somebody who sort of spearheads the whole initiative and then, you know, we work with them. And that's sort of one thing I learned today. Um, and the other thing, a couple of things, a public-private relationship is key to the whole thing with um, developing <coughs> a new town center. And so the public uh, investments help spur the private investments, and you really you need both. Um, but another thing is I realize that Berlin is in a, a place that it's sort of transforming from a small, rural, relatively small rural town to sort of a population center. And this is what these outlying Chittenden County towns have been doing for years now. It is a long process. It's a difficult process. But if we're going to do it, it's, it's really important to do it right and to, to get some help in doing it. So. And I would say, too, that like we don't necessarily have a choice, right? It's like we can plan for this to happen and be ready for the growth. Okay. Or it'll happen, and it'll happen in ways we don't want it to, because you know yeah. there's a there's significant population in the town that they're interested in keeping the rural characteristic of their you know neighborhood or whatever, you know. So we can do that, but it takes right. planning, and that's part of what the new town center is for. Right. So like, we can have a spot where all that is concentrated, you know, have um, a plan for how the the town will grow, because no matter what, it's going to grow. We can't keep people it's out. Growing. You know, Bar Barry's full, Montpelier's full. So, um, we <laughs> well, it's just it's in a as you know, it's in a position right off the interstate. This yeah, is where the location. growth is going to happen. Barry and Montpelier have been contained entities for a long time, but you know we're kind of open fodder. And I mean that, but Jacob makes a good point. This compact growth is a way to do it in a sense less expensively. Like the infrastructure will be less expensive, the maintenance will be less expensive if you contain it in a small area, relatively small area. So when you mentioned that they need somebody to spearhead it, is that the consultants that... Um, that cons know the I, th I think we're looking for staff, yeah. town of Berlin What's staff. That's the impression staff that I had, yeah. additional yeah. staff yeah. to... To do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, it's a lot of work. Intense. That's what I hear. Yeah, it's it's yeah if, you, if you haven't, so you were here at the last meeting, so I would recommend if you have a moment, come and talk to Tom and look at the presentation mm. from what they saw from South Burlington. That Those materials are oh, yeah. pretty, pretty convincing. And one of the things that they came back with, so I'm telling this secondhand, so interrupt me if I'm telling it <laughs> no. wrong, is that they had, they had a champion. Mm -hmm. And somebody who was on mm -hmm. staff, who was mm -hmm. a champion, has been there for, she was like, what, 12 years, yes. you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and she's been shepherding mm -hmm. the town okay. center through the process. And there was it was it was her who was the point of contact who kept things moving forward. Who dealt with, but who was an employee, yeah, and who you know had a responsibility to the town to make sure that it was working in, in the right way. Yeah, it's got to happen. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, we, we, we can give you some more hours, Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got five hats already. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> topple if he gets another one. You <laughs> might like this hat the best, though. I would love to do it, but I don't have the. I, to be honest with you, I don't have the expertise to do yeah. it. Yeah. I just. I couldn't do it. I don't, yeah. And it does take somebody knowledgeable. I mean, one of the things, there was somebody from VCGI 
the um, Vermont Center for Geographic, whatever. Information, yeah. Uh, information, and, you know, talking about all this new mapping that they're developing and all this, I'm going, this is fascinating, but you need somebody who knows what they're doing mm -hmm. to work it. So you do need a, a professional. Yeah, so that's kind of like the main, our, our main goal in coming to these meetings is to try to, um, you know, convey our vision of, of what it'll take to achieve this goal and um, you know you got you guys are the purse strings so <laughs> if we're if we're gonna be able to get an extra per an extra staff person that can do this you know we, we need to talk to you about it and talk about what concerns you have and you know logistics and stuff so. and plan for it and budget it and budget for it yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. budget's coming up soon right in a couple mm -hmm. couple weeks so. Mm -hmm. So it's ex exciting times, um, very challenging times, uh, but this is what the town wants. So, and we're gonna try to implement it. But it's 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 a big chore, but it'll be fun. <laughs> Thank you both so, for your efforts. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's important that we stay in touch with you so that you know what we're doing. Um, on behalf of the town, and you know, if you ever have any questions, let us know. How soon would you say this professional would you seek, in your opinion? How soon would you so, say they should be on board? So next April we should be getting the that grant, right, Tom? Yes. Yeah. Um, so so um, you know, thanks to the select board, um, I think it was like thirty-five thousand that that you guys have set aside for towards this grant, right? And yes. And so we're and then our yeah, they'll be giving us the the state will be giving us twenty thousand or something like that. So, twenty four thousand, yeah. Yeah, so we um, hope essentially we like you know we're we're hoping that when that comes mm -hmm. through that you know we could use that mm -hmm. as a part of you know getting mm -hmm. a professional on on board and having them start the process. And then our next budget year would start in July. July. So yeah. So conceivably have somebody, mm -hmm. you know, have money in in the bank if, right. if we budget for it. Right. So keeping that in mind as well then. Are there other questions? I don't have any others. No. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. well thank you, thank you for giving us support in this. And, um, have a good evening. Yeah, yeah you too. Seven fifty people are here. The seven fifty people are here. Okay. Uh conservation. Mike and Hannah. <laughs> So these are folks that have expressed interest in being appointed to the, the revised re recreation committee. So the select board likes to meet folks that they put on the committee. So they're here to uh, 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 hear you, maybe to give yourself a you know a, a brief resume and who you are and why you want to be on the on this committee, and they'll <laughs> ask you questions and we'll go from there. Well, Hannah, we'll start with you. Okay. I'm Hannah Connor. Um, I had spoken with Phil Gentilly sort of first and corralled other people to, <laughs> to join in. Um, I think Phil's idea is that the Conservation Committee and the Recreation Committee can sometimes um, not have the same interests <laughs> um, and thought that it would be a great idea to have two separate committees again. Um, and that got me thinking about all the opportunities that we have for a recreation committee in this town um, that we may not be using. <laughs> um, Your background or? Um, sure, I grew up here, lived here my almost my whole life. Um, I've got two kids in elementary school, a 10 year old and a six year old. Um, and I think my my sort of primary interests are to to help youth recreation. Um. Mike, yep, Mike Noyce. I live on Marvin Road. Um, like Han, I got two kids at the elementary school. Um, I uh, uh, I coach at U thirty two. I have uh, I coach three varsity sports there, and um, you know heavily involved in, in the youth in the community. Um, for a long time. Um, I'm like, Hannah, I did grow up here. I married somebody who grew up here. So, um, 
And uh, I think it's, I think one of the most important things we can do is have um, opportunities for our kids. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of other towns where this is happening and I get discouraged when um, I see those opportunities that could happen here and they're not. And it just makes me wanna, um, makes me wanna be a part of it, so. Hannah drug me along and I'm happy to be here, so. Um, yeah. They weren't kicking and screaming, you were here That's first. Right. So. <laughs> That's true. I read the time wrong. Okay. It's all good. We um, can hear yeah. your enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So um, I move that we appoint Hannah Connor and Mike Noyce to the Recreation Board. I second that motion. Thank you both. Any further That's discussion? Right. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank yeah. you. Mega, thank you. Thanks. Welcome on board. <laughs> if you find, find any more folks willing, willing to come, we're working on it. We're working on it, yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you do the economic yeah, development? Yeah. If, uh, economic development council meeting? So, um, Tor Nelson actually ended up chairing this. I thought he, he might like to get back in the saddle cha chairing some <laughs> meetings, so. He, he didn't say no. He did not say no. Um, so he ran that meeting. Um, you can see the, the report in, in the packet, I suspect. Um, the, the punchline is the application fits all of the requirements that are in place for the tax stabilization application. And uh, we, we approved it to pass up to the select board for consideration at uh, you know, the properly warned meeting with the the rest of the procedure. So I'm happy to answer questions if there's anything unclear. I think Tom can answer them too. Um, what I read was pretty self-explanatory. I thought it was quite clear. Unapproved minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I spoke to Tor today and um, there's, there has to be 15 day warning of this. So he asked that, depending on what came out of from you folks tonight, that I warn this tomorrow for the first meeting in, for your first meeting in November. That makes sense. Absolutely. Anything else on that? Let's see if you guys have questions. Any questions? Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Yep. I'll right, see you guys later. Yep. Thanks, you too. Uh, pr oh, before you go, Jeremy, uh, approval license vouchers and permits. Do you have a, do you have a tally sheet of the... Uh, that's right. I can. I can do this. We used to do this the hard way. Remember? Um, right here. Yeah. Oh, oh there right. Right. excellent. Thanks <laughs> for the hard way. Very good. You're so good. good. <laughs> Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number two zero G zero seven with checks one nine six four six through one nine six eight three in the amount of $158,180.17. Also payroll warrant number 20-08 for payroll from September <clears throat> September 29th, 2019 through October 12th, 2019, in the amount of $42,656.76. I second the motion as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, and uh, let's see here. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Okay. Minutes? Yeah. Um, the minutes here? I've got this all marked up here. I can't read it. I think it's the minutes. Yeah, yeah. approval of select board minutes for 9-19-19. Were we all here? I will. Or enough of us here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I make the motion here. that we approve the minutes of 9 9 19. 9 19 19. 9 19 19. Yeah, second that motion. Excellent. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table, Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. Huh. Round table, uh, Justin? Nothing. Well, I do not have anything this evening. Uh, I have something for added. Sure. Um, so I received uh, some correspondence from the folks from Maplewood. Uh, there, uh, when folks are exiting their facility there, um, whatever GPS, there's, there's some confusion. Folks are turning right 
uh, coming out of there to get to the interstate. And so to help cure that, they would like to purchase a sign saying Interstate 89 this way and would ask that the uh, town put that up in the, in the town right away there, across from their exit. I would recommend if they do that, they put a do not enter sign on the other side of that. <laughs> I, I, no, I think, that, I think that'll be all the way across the road against the, oh, yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's not gonna interfere with the snowmobiles going back and forth through there, is it? I will. We don't know. I'm not, I'm not a snowmobile guy. I'll, I'll ask that question. I don't even know if they, they, no, they go they through further down, I think. Further they they go, further do down. they go through the swamp or are they take in the They're basically the right across from the entrance section. Okay. Yeah. So they're going to purchase a sign they just want to split up? Yes. Seems reasonable. I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Tom? No. Anything in the second session?